Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, I want to apologize because we we are, we are facing some technical problems. Uh, you know, but uh, we shall start. Okay. Thank you for your patience once again. So, uh, good evening to all. Uh, I'm going to put in the uh, link for you to sign in and sign out for your attendance. Okay, that's very important. And a couple of, of rules here that you need to follow. Okay, the ground rules. Okay, so please activate your cameras. We want to see your beautiful and handsome faces. I know it's, it's a long day, but uh, mm -hmm. it's always right to show your faces, okay? Um, if you have any questions that you may have later, please you know, put it in the chat box. Okay, I'll keep note of it, and then I will ask the questions to the speaker. And of course, if you have any questions, you can use the raise the hand function, and then you can ask the speaker too, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to pass this back to my colleague, Ian, and then Ian will introduce the speaker, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Will. First and foremost, for those who are celebrating Chinese New Year, I'd like to wish you all a happy and prosperous Year of the Ox. Now back to our alumni speaker. Currently based here in Singapore, our ASEC alumnus, Rhys, is a serial entrepreneur and sustainability writer. He created his own company, Bitzu, to focus his energy on helping business grow while taking care of the environment. Now, without further ado, I shall now pass the mic over to Rhys for his presentation. Thank you very much, Ian. Hi, everyone. Very happy to be here. Uh, you cannot see me. I, uh, I got a little issue with my camera, uh, but at least you will see the presentation and that's the most important part. Uh, it's actually much better like this. And so for today, I would like to keep it uh, quite alive. So I um, please do not hesitate to uh, raise your hands. I mean, raise your hands. Uh, digitally, I would like to ask you some questions. I would like to make it more interactive for everyone. And um, and if you have any questions, uh, clearly, exactly as uh, as it was mentioned earlier, do not hesitate. So the goal of today is to talk a little bit about my background. Is to mention a little why um, why I started my business. What is the goal of my business? what is um, the industry about and in the end i will share some pieces of advice what um, helped me to um, i mean until until now and what i would say what helped me a little every day so i'm french you you might have recognized the uh, the accent even though i, I try to to hide it a little. Is there many non-French, actually non-native non, uh, non French speaker in the audience? Is there, is there many this year? Raise your hands if you, if you do. Davide, maybe? <laughs> Others? No, I, 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 don't, I don't see much um, hands raised. Okay, so um, so oh, Alberto as well. Uh, okay, very good. Um, so basically, I come from north of France. Come from pretty um, a pretty uh, poor family, I would say. Um, this might help you a little to 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 understand um why I did what i did uh, this is um well i'm from i wanted to show you a picture of where i'm from uh, i found it pretty nice this is the best that i found <laughs> it's 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 from uh, from wikipedia so basically i come from the countryside there were um a lot of trees and fields around me that's maybe why i work in sustainability now and when i was um as I mean, when I was uh, a student, when I started to, to study, I, I moved to Lille to uh, push my studies. I will show you as well along this presentation, some, uh, some um, pictures about where I moved. But then since you, you cannot travel, then at least you will be able to, uh, <laughs> to travel a little uh, during that, uh, that hour. So then move to, uh, move to Lille to, um, to continue my studies and then I uh, moved to uh, Paris to have my, uh, to do my master's degree. So I studied finance and 
so I was math and finance basically. I could have worked in a, in a bank and um, for me, it was slightly different. I really loved what I, uh, what I studied, uh, really enjoyed it. And, but for me, it was everything about sports. And, and so basically everything I did was linked to this. I was writing thesis about this. I was volunteering. Uh, I was making some studies for uh, big companies. And I wanted to work in, uh, in, in sports industry. Um, so I, 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 um, I, I was participating to many conferences. I, um, all the internship that I did was, was linked to it. And when I, uh, I finished my, uh, my master's degree, I, um, I moved to, uh, so I, uh, I applied to SAC, fortunately. I got accepted to, uh, to ESSEC and um, I moved to uh, Singapore. So is anyone, any one of you recognize this, um, this building? Is there any, um, any hand raised? Yeah, John, you can, very good. Uh, so this is uh, the National Library and that was the former ESSEC campus in Singapore, so and this is in uh, near Bugis Samati. And so when I moved to um, I moved to moved to Singapore, um, still worked in um, in uh, in sports. Uh, we had a, a big project with uh, UFA, uh, so UFA is the European um, Association of Football. Uh, so it was it was um, very interesting to me and. Um, and pushing my um, pushing my desire to um, to, uh, to to work in, um, in in sports industry, I um, I got closer from from different uh, different people working in sports here linked to linked to this study, and afterward I um, I met um, who became afterwards my um, my partner, and uh, so we got in touch. And um, and I had the opportunity to uh, to move to Bangkok after after Singapore. So after spending one year in Singapore, I had the feeling maybe you have this same feeling is that Singapore it's very different from France, and at the same time it's not so different. And I I wanted to discover more Asia basically, and so in this. Um, and with uh, with this in mind, I had the opportunity to uh, to move to Bangkok, and uh, without really thinking much, I moved to Bangkok. Um, any one of you went to Bangkok earlier? Raise your hand if you if you did. Raise your hand digitally. No, I don't see any. Lorenzo. Okay, not much. Um, well, basically, um, if you didn't, I really recommend it. What I like with this picture is that you, you see basically um, buildings and also so very new buildings and also very traditional um, traditional temples. And basically in, in this city, it's everything um, around this in the sense that it's a very good mix of of um, of different things, different different buildings, um, so different architecture, um, but also a lot of a lot of a lot of mix, different different cultures, a lot of different people, and um, and living there, it's it's very interesting. One thing I could um, I could tell from from this experience is. Uh, so here I want to give you a little uh, keys to um, uh, if you want to move in another countries later. Well, if you are um, if you are in Singapore, you're already in a, in a different country. Uh, but again, in a country with much different uh, different culture. So by moving there, uh, everybody speak Thai. And so one thing is that you need to speak the language, and it's complicated. Um, not many 
when I arrived there, I realized that not many French people were speaking the language, but this is actually crucial. When you arrive in Singapore, it's crucial to speak English. Um, it might be good to speak Mandarin when you arrive in, uh, in Thailand, it's crucial to speak Thai. And, and so basically it's, it's, it's a lot of effort. It took me two hours per day for a year, but you absolutely need to do this um, if you really want to, um, to, to, to spend some time there. Uh, and if you work there, a lot of people do not speak the language, but it's not the best. You, um, also, one thing is that as soon as I was able to speak um, Thai and as soon as, and coming from, uh, from Essek, which is over there, um, seen as a, a very, um, of course, a, a very good diploma, um, you are able to find amazing job with very good salary. I'm not talking just about the salary, it's just that the opportunities you have are also amazing just by the fact that you can speak the language. Another key aspect to move in a country which is very, um, very different from your own culture is to listen to people um, and just learn from them. And it, it, it might sound um, easy. It may be something you have, uh, you have learned as well. It's cool. It's, it's, I remember actually learning this. But still, it was something very crucial that really make all the sense once I arrived there. So you just learn from people around you and you um, just try to understand um, who they really are and, and um, how they live on a daily basis and, uh, um, and, and basically how you can, you can get, the, um, uh, I would say, how you can really be, be yourself there, I would say. And another key, mostly, uh, mostly in Thailand, uh, which is um, a Buddhist country, and people are very, um, uh, very calm, it's to, um, it's to stay humble. Uh, a lot of people, they arrive there and they feel, yeah, I know what I'm doing, I know who I am. And, um, and uh, they, they just basically apply their, apply their own rules in this country and this couldn't work. So uh, listen from them and stay humble on, on who you are. It's, it's a key to, uh, to adapt to this country. So little, um, uh, little sidewalk, I would say, from, um, uh, from, from my, um, my background. I think it's, it's crucial for you to, uh, very important for you to, um, to, to learn these type of things. If you uh, plan to move in, um, in another country later on, and even more with a culture which is very different from your own. Um, then, so moving to moving to to, to Bangkok and um, still um, still willing to uh, to to work in, um, in in sports industry and uh, mostly uh, mostly in football, I um, I got a chance to um, to basically set up uh, a company. In, uh, in Bangkok. So my partner was, as I was mentioning before, was in Singapore. Um, he had um, a football agency and the goal was to mix football clubs, European football clubs with uh, brands in Asia. And so I was um, in charge of the Thai market. And um, I would say lucky enough after a few a few weeks, I um, it's it, it, it started to resonate to people, and I started to get in touch with some big clubs, uh, and so soon enough, I was uh, becoming the main agent for um, Paris Saint Germain, so the main club in uh, in in France, I would say, and uh, I don't know if everybody agrees on this. There are always some <laughs> some debates about it. Um, but at least for the previous year, at least on, 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 on this year specifically, um, there, um, it, it was the case and it's still, still the case. And, um, and, and so I was uh, 25 and uh, being in charge of finding sponsorship for, uh, 
um, for a club. So uh, for such a big club. So for me, it was clearly a relief. I was an entrepreneur. I was doing what I always loved. And, um, and it was working pretty well. Then the, the, so this was in 2015, in 2016, the king in Thailand died and we lost our clients and our, um, our partners. So all the football clubs um, didn't want to, uh, to come to Thailand anymore. And all the companies we were working with didn't have enough money to spend. For the simple reason is that basically uh, when, uh, when the king died, so I was, it was considered as um, a semi-god, half-god. And, uh, and so basically no companies could uh, spend money in advertising. Uh, no money could be uh, spent on, uh, for yourself. It should be uh, spent for the, for the kingdom, for the kingdom family. And, uh, and so clearly there was, there was no investment uh, possible. And, uh, and so for us, it was a failure uh, because we had to, to stop the company. At the same time, I, um, this was um, when I realized that with the little, with all the money that we were talking about, so we were talking basically about, about millions, uh, millions of euros or UAD, USD, whatever. Um, just, you just realize once you are in such a poor country like Thailand that just a little portion of what you what you have or what you could have uh, could make a lot for these people. Uh, just a little portion of what you what you talk about just would make a big difference for them. And I started to realize as well how um, how bad we are treating the treating the treating sorry the planet in the sense that. Um, I always considered that um, waste management was always well done in France and in Singapore. It's, it's pretty well done. You don't see much. I, um, I, I couldn't believe, though, um, that a lot of products were not recycled for them, for example. I, um, um, I couldn't believe um, that a lot of um, waste was finishing in the ocean. And so I started to, to make some, some research about it. Um, and I think I spent like, like a month doing this every single day, uh, just um, watching, watching conferences, checking online what's, um, how, how it works, what happened with the plastic that we use. Um, so in, in, in Thailand at the time, basically, when, if you want to eat something, you go in the street, you buy some food that will be packed in a plastic box. Um, then it will be um, uh, smoothly put in a plastic bag. And then you will get a drink uh, again in a, in a plastic container. Um, that's, you, you might, you might add, I mean, for sure you have seen it here, but over there, I would say it's even more present. And, uh, and so basically I was researching what's, what's going on with, with all this waste. And, um, and clearly it wasn't the, it wasn't the best, uh, <laughs> the best that I have, uh, that I have seen. So it was a time for me when I, um, I decided that the next company I would have would be in sustainability and and then um, like working in sports was great. It was great for myself, but it wasn't really helping the community. And uh, and so at that time it was for me a breakthrough, and I completely change uh, change my mindset. So then what 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 do you do basically? It's like I was thinking, okay, I I want to work in sustainability. I want to. Um, to have um, to have my next business um, that will be helping the environment, but how could I do that? I have no experience. I studied finance, so I I um, I have no degree 
um, how could I do this? And so this is basically when I started to, um, uh, I decided to work for companies where I could uh, lead some projects in sustainability. So the first, um, the first company I worked for with, uh, was uh, Decathlon. Uh, so the French, uh, the, the the French sports store. So I was still linked to linked to sports. So I was, it was it was quite a a, a good mix on my side and uh, trying to push for um, um, for sustainability project. And so if I have one one, um, I would say one advice is one piece of advice. It's it's to do a similar things if you want to set up your your own company do not start right away do not quit everything but start little projects start small projects on the side start um, if you can to work with your um, to develop your project through your company um, because that's sometimes it is possible and this is what happened to me and it was um, it was I, I think the best the best thing. So um, developing some some um, some some pro sustainability project with Decathlon. So we were stopping um, plastic bags, for example, and trying to reduce the plastics overall in um, in, in in the stores and in, in the supply chain uh, because there is literally everywhere. And then I moved to wanted to move to a, a bigger. A bit bigger project, and I join uh, a company called Central Group. So Central Group is um, is similar to um, the Mullier family in in France. It's huge, literally. Uh, they have malls, they have buildings, they have supermarkets um, everywhere in Thailand. And so basically, my goal was to. Um, was to develop some uh, sustainability project for the company, and of course, when you are when you are there, uh, you you want to develop some project, and um, and the answer that I was uh, that I was I was getting at the beginning was okay. How do we make money? I mean, the question that I had is how, how do we make money? The sustainability was nice, but we had to make money. So basically you need to learn to make money and being sustainable at the same time. And at that time, clearly you think like, but this is not possible. And you quickly realize that it is possible. And so this helped me a lot on, um, on, on this. It's to realize that companies, they always need to make money, whatever they want to be more sustainable or not, they, it needs to be uh, financially viable. And um, and basically having both financial and environmental um, project at the same time are possible. And so basically, amongst all this this project, one of them was to um, was again to uh, to stop plastic bags in in the um, in the in the whole in the whole company. Uh, so we did a small project with five hundred stalls. So 500 is, uh, it's a lot, but for them, it wasn't that much because again, they are, are very big. And, uh, and so in this uh, small project, we mentioned everywhere that, um, that we were stopping plastic bags on the 5th of June. Uh, this was in 2019. And uh, what happened afterwards was amazing is that on Monday, the main competitor um, followed the same train. They, they announced everywhere that they were stopping plastic bags as well. On Tuesday, another one. On Wednesday, another one. On Thursday, another one. And in just a matter of a week, um, the whole retail industry changed in the whole country. So what does it mean? It means that companies look at each other closely and they could move on sustainability very fast, but they, they also, um, it's somehow, somehow there is, uh, in our case, um, people were quite scared of, uh, of being the first. 
uh, the first one to move. And once we say, okay, we, we got to go anyway, um, then all the others followed. And that's very, uh, this is very interesting um, because I'm sure it could happen exactly the same thing um, in Singapore, but not only in the sense that once, once a company in your industry start moving, the others are somehow obliged uh, to move as well. On the rise, you might just be left behind. And so after um, after walking walking there and and learning a lot from um, learning a lot from um, I'm checking if I have questions. No, still no questions in the chat. Um, so do not hesitate again if you have if you have questions. And and, and so learning a lot from there how to mix sustainability and, um, and financially viable projects. I, um, I decided then to, that it was the right time for me to, to set up my, um, uh, my company. So moved back to Singapore and um, I thought it was, it was a good place to, to start a business. And I thought I could bring a value uh, in the market in the sense that it was um, still, um, I mean, still, still not there, I would say, in, in, in terms of sustainability. So um, I moved and, uh, and started, my, uh, started my business there. When, <laughs> and one thing that I've, um, that I have heard when I started my business, uh, so that was the second company, um, is do not expect anything within two years. Valuable things take time. And you know, when when you are employee and uh, and you are um, you are making decent salary, um, and I mean, life life clearly was 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 pretty good when I um, when I was in Bangkok, and at the same time, um, just it, it, it was very hard to to start a business, but it was there was a a, a need I would say, and the um, so this uh, this sentence is coming from one of my mentor that I uh, that I had at that time. And one of the um, one of the, uh, the one of the, the the person who really pushed me to start my own business, and um, and he and he told me this, and so basically he helped me a lot in the sense that if you want to um, if you want to, to to create something, you you will see a lot of people there they will have crazy results very fast. You will see a lot of companies raising funds uh, within less than a year, but don't. I mean, you you, you shouldn't um, uh, you, you shouldn't focus too much on this. You shouldn't focus too much on others, um, because the company that I wanted to have was um, meaningful, and as valuable things take time then it might take much more time for me to have a business that, that really works. And so two years was actually a good, uh, uh, um, a, a, good uh, a good time, I would say, good time frame to, um, um, to, to, to not to give up, I would say, because uh, it can be very, very easy to give up when you are, when you are alone at the beginning. And, and so basically we started, I, mean, I, I, I started the, the, um, the company uh, called Bisu in 2019, August 2019. And, and so basically we um, make sustainability easy for big companies. And the way we do it is by sourcing sustainable, innovative and cost-effective brands in the region. And so we distribute high potential products in Singapore. We focus on Singapore for now due to the circumstances. And of course, the goal is to, um, is to expand um, later on. Here I use the why, how, what 
uh, from Simon Sinek. Are you all familiar with with um, with this? With the why? Who is who is not who is not familiar with it? Uh, anybody? Raise your hand if you are if you are familiar with it. No, not much. Well, if you do not, I would say it's um, it's it's not your fault. <laughs> I think it's something we should learn actually um, at school. When um, when I uh, when I uh, I teach and I and I lecture, I um, I always um, talk about uh, about the why from Simon Sinek. It's very crucial if you if you can after i mean it's not if you can after after this uh this this presentation i highly recommend you if you haven't seen it uh, to go watch um the the why ted talk from uh, from simon sinek and and so basically to come back to what we do we focus on plastic alternatives building efficiency and um, what we call future of food. So basically we collect brands from several companies, we distribute them. And after a bit more than a year, we were able to work with uh, Shangri-La, Fairprice, uh, Kipper, Green Collective, Laptiteco and, um, and SMU. So it's, um, it, it's actually very interesting to see that these companies um, with the same approach, uh, the, the, the same approach that you can um, be more sustainable and make money at the same time, or you can make money while still being um, sustainable, while being more sustainable. This uh, approach, big companies really understand it well. And one cannot be disso dissociated from the other. Um, it's, um, and, and as soon as you, you, you start talking about, um, about money, so you arrive first with the sustainability um, um, label, I would say, um, but as soon as you start talking about money, companies listen to you. And uh, when you realize this, this is amazing. And this is um, this is a team. So after after a bit more than a year, again, like we were able to. Um, so I I, um, I found a, a co-founder to uh, to help me out on a daily uh, daily basis. I would say um, it's very useful if you set up a business alone is to have someone around you. To, uh, to support you in the strategic decisions. And then it's all about the team. It's all about the, 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 the people surrounding you. It's, it's, it's not a matter of, um, of really which decision you will take. It's just who surround yourself and you need to surround yourself with people who can combine um, your own skills. So if you are um, bad at something, find someone who is good um, where you are bad, basically. And this way you will have a team of only strength and zero weaknesses. Um, an, an, an another, another thing here that, um, that you might have realized is that uh, it's, it's pretty diverse. Uh, diverse team. So here we have people from um, from India, from Vietnam, from Israel, uh, from France, of course, from Singapore and from Indonesia. And you you realize as well uh, that such a mix of people um, being with people so different, it's always a good strength as well for the team because people will always bring something on the table and um, so strongly recommend as well to, um, to, uh, to, to, I would say to be surrounded from diverse type of people. Um, then talking about the industry and you, you maybe have realized that 
um, maybe it's too it's is too um, too too short for you. I I'm I'm not too sure, but it's very changing. And mostly, I would say mostly now, in the sense that few years back uh, there was not much going on. Uh, sustainability was only words. Uh, it was only things that, that we were mentioning, but not really something that we were acting on. And, uh, and now it's, it's changing on this. So as you, as you might have seen is fashion industry, for example, which is the uh, second uh, most, um, uh, most polluting industry. Um, they are changing a lot and then and, uh, and mostly fast fashion they they change a lot of of their um, i would say of their uh of their strategy and if you don't do it you might have just be left behind it's just that us customers we want to have um more sustainable brands we we want to consume better and if companies do not do it they might be left behind and a lot of um, a lot of changes happened uh, in some industries, um, and if you don't, if you don't take, if you don't pick up the slack, you you um, you, you might just not exist. Um, so if you are in the book industry, if you were not online very fast, um, well, just Amazon comes and and boom, and you you do not exist anymore. If you are in the uh, photography industry and you are Kodak, if you don't uh, take the digital move, well, you might not exist after, um, uh, after a few years or just, uh, just a few months. Um, if you are blockbusters and, uh, and you sell DVDs, uh, but again, you don't, you don't do it online, just a company like Netflix uh, might come and, um, and just kill you. And so these companies start to understand that they need to, uh, to move very fast, otherwise they might die. We can see it as well in the oil and gas industry. And this is very interesting in the sense that oil and gas industry, it's, um, I, it's, it's an industry that works with all the others industry. Um, we all need oil at some at some point at some part at some point um you know you you want to uh, just to uh to move the product that you that you eat that you consume on a daily basis um we we need we need oil and gas basically so um this industry is crucial for all the others and this is an industry that started to understand that we need to um we need to move um, relatively fast. So we can see uh, Total, for example, uh, they, just, um, they just announced last year that we, they, will, uh, they will stop um, oil and they will do, um, they will focus more on, uh, on uh, clean sources of energy. Uh, BP, the British company, they are not called uh, British Petroleum anymore, but Beyond Petroleum, because they really want to move forward on this. Same for Shell, um, one of the most polluting, uh, polluting company in the world. Uh, they are also um, changing their oil strategy for the next years. So uh, this, this industry, uh, start to, to understand that we need to move. And for me, this is a good, um, I would say a good indicator that all the other industries will move as well. So same for banks, we can see now in, in a lot of banks that do not want to invest in, um, in, uh, in uh, I would say, uh, bad sources of, uh, of energy. And um, in terms of food, we can see now more and more uh, changes in our habits. So now we see in Asia, for example, uh, a lot of people eat um, uh, vegan meat, for example, um, or vegan, vegan sources of, of uh, proteins. 
So that's, um, this is pretty new and I would say new at a wide scale and, and this will just uh, being intensified. And government as well starting to move. So we, we usually say that government need to take a few years before they move. And um, if we see now the governments uh, moving, it's, it's a good indicator as well to say that the, really the, the I, I would say it's it's moving moving forward. All the stakeholders are moving forward. So companies, governments, and um, and people. Then I will I will leave you with um, some uh, pieces of advice um, because this is um, I, I I find it always always nice when I uh, when I watch conferences to uh, to have some uh, some advice. So make uh, connection all the time. And giving a business card is not a connection. I have seen people uh, going in networking event and and uh, and just giving business cards. And they say, hi, this is my name. Here's my business card. Contact me later. This is not how it works. Get interested in the other person. Um, it's, I, I, I would say, um, I'm, I'm checking if I have no I received some uh, some message in the in the chat but it's not a it's not a question yet um, so get really interested humbly I would say in the in the other person and this works all the time you might you might think right now like I don't have time for this or what will it bring me I have um, I have spoken with um, people who are multi-millionaire and they always think that connections are crucial. Uh, being an entrepreneur, I always think that connections are crucial. When you are an employee, connections are crucial as well. So um, this is to me one of the best um, advice that I, uh, that I can give for um, tonight. And this is something that you need to constantly um, work on. Keep learning as well as, um, I mean, a little every week, I would say, or ideally every, uh, every day even. Um, books, TED Talks, podcasts, audiobooks, there are a lot of sources uh, that you have around you to, uh, to, 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 to learn. Just be careful with Blinkist. So Blinkist is an app where you can, um, you can see um, you can see highlights from books in just five minutes. Just be careful from this because sometimes you have some books, you have one main ID and a lot of examples around this ID. And, uh, and in this case where it's easy, um, it's, it's easy to resume it. But if you, uh, there, are, there are a lot of books where it's not the case. And you will miss a lot if you only watch a, a video of five minutes. So just, I mean, five or 10 minutes, um, just be careful with this. When um, I was graduating at ESSEC, one uh, speaker came and he said to the audience, when you leave ESSEC, you know nothing. And at that time, I was uh, I already had uh, had my own business, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's no, it doesn't know what it's talking about. I, I I know a lot of things. I know what I'm doing. I realized after a few years that it was right. And you might you might think that you know a lot of things. Uh, just be careful with this, because uh, you will realize. Uh, soon enough that actually there are a lot of things that you don't know. Uh, so keep, uh, that's why this, uh, this, uh, this, this tip, it's, uh, it's very important to, to keep learning. And there is a, a principle as well that I use by um, many CEOs and famous entrepreneurs, which is the five hour rules. Uh, so I, I, um, I, I know that uh, Steve Jobs, for example, it was, it was using it. Um, I, I, I know that uh, Jeff Bezos uses it, Oprah Winfrey uses it. 
um, it's something that many use. It's basically saying you learn one hour every day on your weekdays. So uh, five times one, uh, you have five hours uh, per week. That's a five hour rule. I, I will say that uh, this can be even too small actually, because uh, if you use your, your weekend and stuff, you can quickly go over to five hour, uh, five hours. And um, if you can do more, it's, it's, it's even better, but keep this on a weekly basis, keep this, um, this, this target of uh, five hours. And then the last pieces of advice that I have for you is to be proactive in everything you do. Whether you want to get a raise, find a job, start your own business, whatever it could be, just um, being proactive, it's one of the most important thing. If you, if you are read uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. This is the number one, if I'm not wrong. Um, I, th this made me uh, think about two, uh, two people as well. One is uh, Idris Aberkan, uh, a French uh, thinker who says, if you let other people decide for you, this is not in your own interest. And, uh, and, and this is true again in, in many, many aspects and, uh, and in companies as well. And another one that I, that I really like, which is slightly different from the first one, uh, but still linked to uh, being proactive is don't wait time will never be just right. From Napoleon Hill, in, in the sense that um, you, you always need to move forward. And this helped me a lot when I had my own business in the sense that you can always find excuses not to do this, not to do that. And actually there is never a perfect time to do something. So you just need to jump into it. And that was the last slide of my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Brice. That was uh, very comprehensive about how you, you know, your whole journey and your path towards entrepreneurship and the struggles and all. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, very good advice that you have there. Okay. So guys, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat uh, or if you have, you can simply just, uh, you know, unmute yourself and ask questions because I have a couple here that was sent to me by email. I don't know why you guys are me by email. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I got one here uh, by Cesar. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, it says, uh, could you give us examples of how you have made sustainable actions financially viable in some of your projects? Yes, sure. So that's a good question. So we can see here, and uh, in my, my bad, I didn't, I didn't focus on, uh, for, on, on it too much. Uh, but for example, here with uh, Keppel Land, what we do is that we supply um, a uh, solution coming from Japan, which is a net that you plug in air conditioning units. And this, um, and this product, it will allow you to decrease by 25% your aircon consumption. So it means that basically you start saving money and at the same time, you can also, um, so you save the environment, right? Cause you consume less. And so you can also claim that, uh, that you are doing good things for the environment. So companies really love this, uh, this type of solution. Um, and this is clearly something that we will have more, more and more. So you, you, you start um, you start reducing your consumption, you save money, everybody's happy. With um, Shangri-La, for example, what we do is that we supply uh, some vegan dishes with high protein intake. So basically Shangri-La, they want to have, uh, this is coming from, from them, they want to change what they have in their, in their menus and they know that their consumers want to try new things. They want to change as well. They want to consume less meat, but they still want to have the benefit of the proteins. 
So we supply to them some um, spirulina products that they use in their um, in their own um, in their menus, and um, and so yeah, they are pretty uh, creative. So they they create very beautiful uh, beautiful dishes with this, and uh, so it looks delicious. And at the same time, it's um, it's much um, much better for their consumers because they can um, they can eat vegan and still have um a lot of proteins so we can have up to 15 percent protein for example and the good aspect of spirulina is that it's a micro algae and so not like meat um, basically it's it uses a lot of co2 and rejects a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere so it's very sustainable um very sustainable source of food and, uh, and why does it make them uh, money? Well, basically because they can answer, uh, they can set the demand from, from their customers. So more customers uh, come to, um, to their restaurants, thanks to this. Uh, then with, um, with uh, FairPrice, they, um, they uh, approached us as well because they wanted to have more sustainable products. So, uh, so we supply different things, mostly coming from, uh, from Thailand. So we supply the spirulina, um, spirulina product as well. Um, we, uh, we supply, um, like for example, we have a, a, bottle of, a bottle of water and the bottle itself, it's compostable. It's not made of plastic. Um, it's made of a material called PLA, and uh, so it's fully compostable. And um, and the thing is, I mean, several advantages to this. One is that it comes from the region, so it doesn't come from uh, France, for example, like Evian, uh, right? So it doesn't come from from quite far. It doesn't come from Fiji either. Like uh, the the brand Fiji comes actually from Fiji, and where half of the population over there do not have access to water, where still they export a lot of water. And, uh, and, and so basically wanted to have another, um, another source of uh, bottled water. And this one is coming from Thailand, the bottle is compostable, it's reusable as well, because since you don't have any plastic, you don't have microplastics. And we know that one liter of water can contain up to 10,000 pieces of microplastics. Uh, so clearly if you drink <laughs> uh, water in bottles, uh, you, you should consider this. And, um, and you don't have all the chemicals as well and endocrine disruptors linked to, uh, linked to plastics. Because when your food touch plastics, you have endocrine disruptors in plastic. And, um, and so, of course, you get um, affected by this. Um, yeah, another, another one that we do with um, SMU, for example, and, and, and La Petite Eco is that um, we, uh, we supply them some uh, toothpaste. So then it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> it might sound interesting, it's actually a, a toothpaste in tablet. And so basically um, the thing is toothpaste are the best product to clean your shoes. So what happens if you take uh, shoe polish, you put it on your toothbrush and you brush your teeth with it. It will be very <laughs> agreeable when you see what we do every day. Um, because toothpaste is actually so corrosive um, that uh, with all the chemicals that you have in it, um, that it's, it's very good to, to clean a lot of things. And I'm not talking only about shoes, I'm talking about many different things. Um, like, uh, like the sink, for example, it's used toothpaste is very good as well. Um, you know, uh, so basically now I buy toothpaste, but only for, <laughs> I mean, for this and not, not to clean my teeth anymore. And, uh, and so what we wanted to have is get removed um, of all these chemicals we wanted to remove the plastic as well because the, the, the tube in the toothpaste um, is of course made of plastic that is not recyclable. And we wanted to remove the water as well from the toothpaste because 70% of it um, is, uh, is water. 
so there is, I mean, it's not a native ingredient, right? We don't really need it. We have our own saliva, so we don't need it. Uh, so we removed all of this and we have now this, these tablets, um, which are fully safe, which are very good as well. And so we uh, supply them to, um, to Fairprice and we supply them to other companies like, um, like SMU. So then we can have this, uh, this daily, daily product um, for the students and we can make them more aware of, um, of, what the, of the sustainable um, items that we can use on a daily basis. Okay, great. Thank you for uh, answering, Breeze. Thank you. That was a very conclusive one. Hey, Breeze, I'm sorry, but uh, I think the students yeah. are going to jump into another class. Uh, can we do this? No can I email you the questions that the students gave me? And then you can sure. then try and answer, and then I can send it to the students, okay? Sure. Um, so, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for, uh, for not answering all of them right away. Um, no please do not hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn if um, if you have other questions, or even if you don't have any questions, uh, I would be uh, happy to uh, to be in touch with you. And if I can help on uh, on anything, do not hesitate. Um, but I'm happy as well to uh, to answer the, the, the question well uh, later on by uh, by email. Thank you very much for thank you very much, thank you guys. Uh, thank you very much, please. Thank you. Can we all just wave at Bruce? Uh, I know you can't see the bit of appreciation. And uh, yeah, do remember to sign out, uh, Bruce. Once again, merci beaucoup, and the rest merci. of you uh, have a good evening, and uh, we'll take care. Okay, we'll catch up soon. Take care. Bye bye. See Thanks. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.